This is a local color I'm reading of the apple. That would be the actual color that we see the apple to be. And so I'll put this right here to show you. Now, in that lightest portion of the apple, right here, before, right here is where the, the, the light is hitting it the strongest. But let's go right down here in the lightest portion of the apple. Um, this is what we see right here. Now, going into the shadow of the apple, right, let's just go right up here into this portion of the shadow of the apple. This is what we're seeing right here. The way to think is that is an orange in an orange ring. It can lean a little bit towards more towards red orange, or it can lean a little bit more towards towards yellow orange. I think this one leans a little bit more towards red orange. So even if you wanted to call it a reddish orange or, or an orange that leans towards red, think about the hue like that. That helps it to register in your mind, so that then any color that you see that's in that range, any uh, tube color, it helps you better uh, be uh, better able to identify tube colors. So then you know how to work with them. All right, so now look what I've got on the palette, and let's look, look back at the scene. Now, the, the, where the light's hitting the road there, that feels like a blue, very, very light blue, very low intensity blue, that's taken care of right here, just like the, the trees in the forest. As we look at the, the ground that's popping out of those shadows, that reads to me as orange. Now that reads, it's a low intensity orange, it may be a low intensity red orange. And then if I put this on a panel, you can see why that would be hard to read. If I said that reads to me as orange or red orange, and then I point to this, uh, some people will go, not to my eyes. Well that means that you need to have a little bit more experience of working with color. Because if you add, if you take red orange, and add the complement of red orange to it, then you get that lower intensity. But we don't need to do that because we already have that capability right here. Okay, let's put all this together now and show how it works. Now, my intention here is not to do a full painting. I'm going to do just a rough study showing how we will plot these hues, values, and intensities where they belong in order to interpret the scene that we're looking at here. What are we seeing? Right in here, we are seeing that red orange again in that very low intensity. Um, so we could go through we can go through the exercise uh, of where we take a test strip. Well, let's just go right up here. It's a very it's a light. We can see first of all it's a, a very light value. So we can reach over into the lighter value here, and I'll come right over here since this is the low intensity area in which we're working and a very low intensity, very light, so the intensity needs to be lower and reach right up into the, this area. I may say here one thing I have meant to emphasize throughout this and I have uh, let, kind of let it slip and that is we, we can reach for the complement to lower the intensity. We can also reach for any mixture that's already low intensity. So yes, it is possible to you know create a your range of just grays made of black and white. That's one way to get the intensity lowered. But as I said earlier, we get much more flexibility in warm and cool uh, when we use this approach where we create those neutrals uh, with complements rather than black and white. But for a little white in it just to knock the intensity down and raise the value. Pull a little bit more of the green back in. Now let's see. Is this in the range? I want to give that a little bit of variation there. There we go. All right, now let's lay that that color in. And it's just whispering. It's reaching down in here, and you can see the similarity in value. Oh, this is a beautiful example right here. I'm so glad I found I uh, spotted that. 
same similar same in same value range different hue different intensity <laughs>